We've talked a lot here about on this show about how censorship just begets more censorship. And one of the most stunning segments I've seen in a while happened over the weekend on Brian Stelter's show at CNN. A former Facebook executive, Alex Stamos, outright advocating for big companies like YouTube and cable carriers like AT&T and others taking off channels that they deem are bad. Let's take a listen to what they said. We have to turn down the capability of these conservative influencers to reach these huge audiences. There are, are people on YouTube, for example, that have a larger daytime, a larger audience than daytime CNN, and they are extremely radical and pushing extremely uh, radical views. And so it's up to the Facebooks and YouTubes in particular to think about whether or not they want to be effectively cable networks for disinformation. And then we're going to have to figure out the OANN and Newsmax problem. You know, that these companies have freedom of speech, but I'm not sure we need Verizon, AT&T, Comcast and such to be bringing them into tens of millions of homes. Um, I, I, this is, you know, allowing people to seek out information if they really want to, but not pushing it into their faces, I think is where we're going to have to go here. Wow, Crystal, they found us. Uh, we are one of those shows that has a larger audience than daytime CNN saying radical things like people should have $2,000 checks, consider health care, don't invade foreign countries. They found us and now they want to take us away. It, you can see how quickly that slippery slope begins. And that's terrifying. That's a former Facebook executive who has a lot of, lot of cachet in Silicon Valley. And really, I think this is about protectionism. You know, when he refers to that daytime CNN figure as if daytime CNN is better than any of the friends of the show or, or our show, it's completely crazy. Yeah, I like the way he's just out front about like the reason this is a problem is because people other than CNN are popular. <laughs> like, oh my God, you can't allow like these other thoughts into the bloodstream. So I appreciate the way he just puts it out in the open. And we know how this goes. I mean, we've seen how this goes. Sure, you get Trump off Twitter and then they ban the Red Scare ladies. Um, over last week, I saw the Surfs on YouTube had their channel just like pulled for no, no real reason. Censorship just leads to more censorship. And if you think that you're safe from that, you are totally wrong. And there, look, there's a reason why liberals are the most comfortable with it. It's because they feel like their views are reflected at the highest um, most levels in these companies. But even you ultimately are not going to be safe from if leadership changes. How is that ultimately going to go? So it also just feeds into this narrative that the scariest thing is our fellow citizen, that the scariest thing is ideologies and ideas that are different from your own. And ultimately, if you actually care about de-radicalizing people, if you actually care about keeping the country together and making it a livable place for everybody, um, where you know people care about one another and want to see everyone succeed, if you care about those things, then this type of demonization approach is deeply destructive to the direction that we ultimately want the country to go in. But it all comes back to the, the business model here, the bottom line. CNN has every interest in making sure that they are like one of the sole sources of quote unquote news and information. Um, this also popped up recently. So they're starting to lay the groundwork for, hey, these, these podcasts. Yep. Podcasters are, are really out of control. Look at this. So this is from the AP podcast rife with misinformation. Remain, remain on social platforms like Apple and Google as extremists exploit a loophole left after the tech companies <laughs> crack down on other mediums, making it sound like podcasts are super scary, super nefarious. You can see how they're laying the groundwork for even more censorship. We also saw last week articles saying, oh, now the extremists are on Signal and these yes. other encrypted messaging apps. So we got to look at them as well. It just never, it literally never ends. No, exactly. Which is what are they going to take? They're going to take away all encryption and then they're going to take away, again, podcasting. That's the scary one because guess what? Apple controls 70% of the podcast market. If they take you off of the podcast app, you're dead. You're going to lose 70% of your audience. And then Spotify increasingly rolling up a lot of podcast listeners as well. The same thing could happen. And you could point to Joe Rogan. I mean, Joe Rogan can have Alex Jones on and he'll be fine, but he's the biggest podcaster in the world. I mean, if you're starting out, if you're smaller, slightly less stature, you really could be at the mercy of one or two different companies that can control whether you can put out your message. Now, luckily, podcasting is on an open protocol called RSS. But as we found out, I used to think web hosting was as an open protocol as you get. But then AWS just decided to take it away 
from Parler or you know, in so many different ways. So you're beginning to see how one or two different companies can control this. The other part I thought was really scary there is when he's talking about the cable carriers themselves. Because again, this is a monopolization problem. If you live in New York City, you only have Time Warner Cable. You literally don't have another option. Same thing in a lot of major cities in the country. So if Time Warner Cable decides what and what does not get carried on their network or on their, on their carrier as a result of political input, then we are going down, again, a very dangerous direction where they control the eyeballs of tens of millions of American citizens. So just such a troubling road. This is exactly where we're going, and I'm, I'm really terrified of all of it. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, thank you guys for watching today and bearing with us while we're on remote. We'll be back on remote again tomorrow with another great show for you. We hope you have a great day. That's right. We'll see you later.